Happy New Year, boys and girls. It's Lori here with lesson number four for fame. And our artist is Mark Chagall and our composer is Alexander Borodin. Let's check him out. Our artist today is Mark Chagall and here he is as a young man and uh, in his later life right here. He was born in 1887, just not too long after phones were invented. And he was born into a Jewish family in Russia. And at the time, the Jewish people were a little persecuted, so they had their own little uh, division where they could live, which was called the ghettos. But he was a happy child. He was one of nine children. He had eight younger, younger sisters. And you can imagine what household that was with younger sisters. <laughs> when he was little, he liked to, when it was at school, he liked to draw, uh, just like most of our artists, as we learn, he liked to draw pictures on paper that were in his book. And his parents weren't really excited about him being an artist, but they decided that they would probably send him to school. So this was Russian gentleman who taught Jewish students. So he went to a Jewish student school to learn um, how to draw on things. And he would go home and practice. And he would practice on uh, burlap. And purple was his favorite color for a while. So he'd do things in purple and his sisters were going, <laughs> all this burlap, we need this. So they would put it on the floor when the floor was clean or if there was a hole in the chicken coop, they would stuff his drawings in um, oh, no. in the chicken coop in the hole. So he was just probably, you know, uh, sisters. Anyway, when he was 19 years old, uh, he did have, like I said, they had gone to the Jewish school and learned about art, but he decided to go to Paris, you know, where Paris is the art world. And he went over there and he went to the artist um, enclave, which they called the um, Beehive. And there it was where the penniless artists, where people, the artists didn't have very much money. That's where they lived. And there was Mondolini and Picasso. And just at this time, Picasso was getting into Cubism and he really liked uh, the dull colors of Cubism. He was, when he did that, but Marc Chagall color was his, his thing, he loved color. And um, so he would, he went there and he did a little cubism and he you know, did his art, but then he wanted to go back home. So he went back home and when he was there, um, unfortunately World War I started and so did the Russian Revolution. So he was stuck there for like nine years, but in the, he was a, a director of an art school there and he had to get into different things because um, he couldn't go back to Paris because he had to stay in Russia. And he uh, was into murals, so he did a mural for the Russian Orthodox Church. And later on, when he went back to Paris, he did a mural of the ceiling, which I will show you in just a minute. Okay, and to recognize some of uh, Chagall's work, we'll see that he liked to put floating uh, subjects in there. So we have uh, the, the wedding couple floating. Here's Paris. And he, and he liked upside down people too. So he had upside down. And here's another floating person. And here's Mark Chagall and his wife, Bella. And you can see that um, it was all light and airy and nice bright colors. He always liked the bright colors also. And another aspect of his um, art was he liked to put fiddles in there. So here's one with the fiddler and here's another one with the fiddler. And here's our third one with the fiddler. And we think this is a rabbi and a rabbi and a fiddler. And, and see, you can see the bright colors. Or, and also he liked cows in his pictures. So we have a cow and here, look up here, we have a floating person. And he liked to bring his hometown of Russia into his photos too. So there's some, and you can see right here, the, the uh, synagogue where he worshiped. Here we have when he liked to put cows and chickens. He used to play with these kind of animals when he was young, goats, they had goats and a donkey. And he used to play with them, like I said, when he was young. And here's his, um, here's a cow, here's a cow here in the air floating. And here's, here's a couple, a wedding couple. And here's another cow and a cow and a fiddler <laughs> and a rabbi. And here over here, we have a cow and a chicken. And if you look really close, you see a little hometown back here. So not only was he colorful and imaginary, 
he dealt in surrealism, which is taking two objects that normally look fine by themselves, but when you put them together, they look a little odd. And here are some examples of his realism photos. And remember, he liked bright colors also. So we have a little circus guy, we think, right here, and a little donkey, and we have a horse holding up a Christmas tree and an umbrella. And we have this uh, young man here, and we think it's a man with a hoop and a goat. <laughs> so these are all surrealistic, more, more kind of dreamlike. Yeah. And he was, he did a lot of work like that also. And that ties us into, I told you earlier that he did murals, and I will show you what he did. On and we house. have the Paris Opera House here. And here's the ceiling, a beautiful dome ceiling that Chagall painted. And here's a little uh, better picture. And you can see, kind of surrealistic, there's a woman kind of floating around. Here's, we have more floaters. He just loved floating people. <laughs> and his bright colors, look at the, the reds and the yellows and the blues and the greens. He was just, and he said that um, love was the color of his paintings. Oh. So he just loved the paint. That was his Love was a primary color, so when he painted, he had a lot of joy in his paintings. Here's something like we're going to do today for our art project. Here's Marc Chagall's uh, Eye and the Village. And you can see right here, here's an X. And here we have an X going along this line. And he has different things going on in each of the Xs. Here we have a cow. Like I said, he liked cows. And they think that this man may have been Chagall himself. And there, if you look really closely, you can see a little line right here where they're having some kind of connection. And here we go. We have a couple in, in a village in one part of the X. And see the floating people. The lady is upside down. He liked upside down. And here's an upside down house. And down here, his, his Jewish faith, we brought in here this little Christianity, but he um, understood that. Uh, everybody has their own uh, way of religion, own way of worshiping, actually. And here, here's a circle right here. And we're bringing it kind of all together. And see the bright colors. And this is what we're going to do today in our art. We're going to make an X and then have a time frame. And we're going to draw our favorite things in each of the little spaces of our art project. So we'll get to that. That's a fun project. This is Alexander Borodin, and he was born in St. Petersburg, Russia on November 12th, 1833. Let's look. Right about here. So Alexander Borodin was the son of a Russian prince that allegedly was related to all the way back to King David from the Bible, which I thought was pretty cool. So uh, Alexander was born, like I said, November 12th, 1833, and in St. Petersburg, Russia. And although his dad died when he was young, he was left with lots of money for education and um, for the family, obviously. Alexander showed an early interest in both science and music and by age 13 he was composing his first pieces pieces plural of music for the flute the cello and the piano pretty amazing i could not do that at age 13. <laughs> uh, one time alexander and his friend were playing their flute and their instruments and walking single file in in line um through nature through some trail in russia and it was snowing and so they were being very careful and all of a sudden alexander went and fell through and his friend said oh my gosh where'd you go and he's looking everywhere everywhere and it turns out that he fell like through the snow into like a cellar door or something and alexander didn't really care if he was hurt or not but he cared that his flute was not destroyed or broken. <laughs> Poor guy, man. That's crazy, huh? So Baradin was really smart. By age 16, he entered the Academy of Medicine to become a doctor. That's like your sophomore in high school age. That's pretty crazy. 
Anyway, he worked in a hospital and it was there that he met Modest Musorgsky. I think I'm saying that right. <laughs> um, anyway, he's another Russian composer and, it, and he became part of the Russian Five, they called it, uh, composers. And those five, it was their goal to create music um, to represent Russia. And they were very proud of their heritage and it was very unique culture uh, known to the world. Barden was a super busy guy. Not only was he a doctor, but he gave medical lectures, he worked in the lab, he wrote scientific papers, he did charity work, and he composed music. And on top of it, he was the first to open a medical school for women only. And back then in Russia, that was not done. So that was a huge help to the community. Um, he began composing his most famous opera, Prince Igor, it was called, about 1869, but he was obviously so busy, it took him 20 years to complete it. And in fact, he actually died before it was completed. And part of the Russian Five, those five composer friends that he had, um, helped him finish it for him um, after he passed away. So it was completed in 1887. So today's music is the theme from the Palachian dances from the opera Prince Igor. Sorry, I don't speak Russian. <laughs> um, but he wrote this piece um, and the opera was actually based on a true Russian folk tale about a group of fierce warriors and they were called the Palafchins. <laughs> and these guys captured in the story a famous prince called Igor and his son. And while holding them prisoner, they decided to entertain them and bring out their loveliest women and dance and sing and do all that. So um, that's kind of a little preface for the opera of Prince Igor. What is the element of music that we're listening to? We're listening to melody and melody is the part of the song that you can hum or sing to, right? And it is gorgeous. I love this song. In fact, it's easy to sing to because later in modern times now, they made it into a new song. Uh, it's the same song, but they put words to it and it's called Strangers in Paradise. So, or Stranger in Paradise. If your teachers wanted to look that up um, and play that for you, you can hear the similarities. Holy moly, I can't talk today. This is hard. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, talking about instruments for a minute, raise your hand if you know what family of instruments the violin belongs to. The violin belongs to the string family, right? Okay, what about the drum? Does anybody know what family of instruments the drum belongs to? The percussion family is where the drums belong. And today you're gonna hear in the music a lot of flutes and piccolos and woodwind instruments. Okay, this is the woodwind family. So this is the piccolo and the flute and the clarinet and the oboe and the bassoon is really long, the saxophone and the recorder. And they all have a wooden piece, kind of like a popsicle stick uh, sticking out the top and uh, you blow into it and that creates the air the wind, right, creates the sound. So uh, listen for those coming up next. So this is Prince Igor's Palovchin dances. I hope I'm saying that right. Anyways, it's 13 minutes and 24 seconds long, so I will not be playing all of it for you. And I'm sorry, it's not a YouTube video this time, it's just music, but it is beautiful. So I will take you to my favorite parts of it. 
It tends to have a pattern of fast and slow and fast and slow. So I will show you those pieces. So the most famous uh, part of it, let me go to about two minutes and 50 seconds. Okay. Yeah, right here. This is the slower part, but it's something you might recognize. A melody that you can sing to. Thank you for being patient. Whoops, that's a little too far. Go back a little bit. Right there. Woo! Sorry, scared you. Whoa, what happened? And ah, come on. Right there, that's close enough. So this is towards the ending of the song, obviously. We're building the dramatic ending, imagining all the dancing and circling and instrument playing.
So today we're gonna take a page out of Mark Chagall's book and draw a little uh, painting ourselves. So what we will need is a blank piece of paper, a ruler and a pencil and some crayons. Uh, the first thing you're gonna do is take your ruler and make an X on your page. You wanna try to take up the whole page. So I'm gonna draw an X and make it go to the end. And um, here's my other X. Oops. And the rule is not really long enough. So if you want, you can just do it freehand. Go from one corner to the next corner. And from this corner to that corner. So there's my X on my paper. And in these spots, we're going to take about a minute and a half. And we're going to draw our favorite seasons, our favorite animals, our favorite silly face and our favorite foods. And we're gonna do those and we're gonna, I'm going to start with the, my favorite season. Hey Siri, set the timer for a minute and a half. One minute and 30 seconds, starting now. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna draw my favorite season. So my favorite season is springtime because all the flowers are coming in and the bumping up their little heads and it's baseball season. So I'm gonna make a little baseball over here in the corner. So you draw all your little things and maybe a little uh, hole in the tree so the squirrels can come in. And it's, uh, like I said, it's baseball season and you can start getting ready to go swimming. So I'm gonna draw a swimming pool over here. And you go on picnic. So here's a little picnic blanket over here. And I put a little food on the picnic blanket. This, this is food and people are gonna be sitting here having a good time eating. I'm just trying to stick people to make it easy. Uh, and then what else do I like about spring? Oh, I like the sunshine and the days are starting to get longer, which we're all excited about because yes. winter is going to be over and more flowers. Just gonna draw more flowers. We love the flowers. You can pick them from your mom or for your nana, for anybody. So here's more flowers. I'm just going to draw lots of flowers. That's what I like. Of course, then the weeds come. I don't like the weeds. <laughs> but that's okay. And here's the swimming pool. There's a little diving board. The pools are just beginning to warm up. And uh, here's my baseball mitt. I get to play baseball. Um, oh, there we go. Hey, yeah. Siri, turn off the timer. Okay, and uh, then you're going to rotate your paper and turn it like this. So I did my spring over here, and now I'm going to do my favorite food. Mmm, what is my favorite food? Hey Siri, set the timer for 60 seconds. One minute, counting down. Okay, my favorite food. Let's see if you can guess what it is. I think a minute and a half was a little too long, so we changed it, but based on the grade level, of course you can adjust. Mmm, can you tell what my favorite food is? And sometimes it's yum, drips, yum. so this, these are little drips over here, and this is just a little uh, cake cone, and usually I like Rocky Road and vanilla, my yeah. favorite ice cream. So that's I what I drew on my, my favorite thing. And again, if you want, you can make a little doily to put it on or a little plate. You know, you can, um, you know, you can even put your face here. Hey Siri, stop the timer. Do it for a minute. Yeah. Hey Siri, set the timer for one minute. One minute, starting now. Okay, and our next one, remember you're gonna turn your paper. And so I'm gonna do a silly face. Those are fun. So my silly face, I'm kind of drawing a face. And I'm gonna have big eyes on my face. Okay, <laughs> one's gonna be silly face. Oh, I know what I should have done, but it's too late now. Remember what he liked to draw on his? Upside down, I probably should have drawn this one upside down. 
That's, that's okay. A, when you rotate okay. it, it may look like it's upside yeah, down. Yeah, it makes it look upside down. So yeah, there's my spring. It's upside down. Perfect. So I'm drawing my silly face. And I like how you're using the whole space of the X. Yeah. And you can draw things up here. And maybe mm -hmm. has has uh, little snakes coming over here. Ooh. Hey, Siri, stop. Okay, and then after we do our silly face, you turn your paper one more time and you're gonna draw your, I'm gonna draw my favorite animal. And my favorite animal is... Hey Siri, set the timer for one minute. A elephant and... You one know, minute elephant timer, counting down. <laughs> elephant uh, timer. Elephant time, <laughs> elephant time with Siri, yay. What and if it, what if it goes <laughs> by the end of the minute? They're really kind of hard to draw, funny. but you know, it's you do your best. Fun, yeah. That's right. And there then color it with lots of bright colors after you're all done. After you're all done, because they get big ears. And then, ooh. Yep, I made it, I, I goofed it up. So mine's gonna be surrealistic. <laughs> there you go. We'll do some surrealism here. Perfect. You know, their ears will be like this and they'll have a trunk come out. So it'll be an elephant. But this is a surrealistic elephant. I like that better. So it doesn't like have to be like an elephant looks like, but maybe kind of what an elephant looks like. And they'll have some tusks out here. These are his tusks. And so. Um, hey Siri, stop the timer. And there's my surrealism-listic <laughs> elephant. Yay. I like that one. That's cute. After you finish all your X's, then you go back and color them with your crayons and make a nice, bright, beautiful Marc Chagall uh, eye village or eye favorite things. And send them to us oh, because we miss, miss, us. miss, yeah. miss being in the so classroom with you. We want to see your beautiful send art. Them, send them, send them. Thank yeah. you.